Hi guys! So last year, I made a video about getting started with your Common App essay when applying to college. I also shared one of my own essays, which I submitted when applying to Penn and Brown. Um, I currently go to Penn. And I'm really thankful for the response I got from you guys. I'm so happy that it was able to to help people calm them down, inspire them. Like I was really, I was really touched by the response I got from people. So it's been a while, but I had to come back with this follow up because a lot of people actually started emailing me their own drafts for essays that they were writing or they were leaving questions for me in the comments. So I wanted to make this video as a follow up to that just to read another one of my essays, which I submitted, which um, helped me get an acceptance uh, from Penn and Brown and two uh, joint medical programs. And just as a way to kind of acknowledge some of the questions or doubts or tendencies that I noticed in a lot of these essays I was reading. And I don't want to call them mistakes, but they're not really helping. They're not making your essay any better. So let's get started. So the first thing I'll say here is that a good common app essay strikes a balance between being both a story and having the underlying logical structure of an essay. A lot of essays tend to fall into only like one out of these two buckets. So, um, you know, you can have an essay that is basically a story from the person's life, but to no real effect, like no real cohesive effect. Um, they, it's a piece of their life, so of course it's telling you something about that person, but it's missing uh, the, the real like structure of, of demonstrating their reactions, their actions, their realizations, all of, um, all of the stake that, that they had in what happened and how it shaped them and how it demonstrates who they are as a person. It, it, it's really missing that, that structure that, that leaves the person feeling like they really actually know something about you after reading it. And then you can have the other, the other extreme, which is more of like a formal essay type, where it's clear what the person wants you to think of them. And, you know, they're telling you things they've done or attributes they have. And it's clear, like, the purpose of why they're writing this. But for some reason, it doesn't... You don't feel it. You know what they want you to believe, but somehow you don't walk away really believing it because it's not written in a more captivating, emotional way. It's it's not a it's not a story, right? You you need both in order to really have like a solid essay because it's not enough to just tell a story, and it's certainly not enough to just tell people about yourself without really showing it. Just because you pick an event with gravity and like seriousness and maybe depth you have to also make sure your writing has that gravity and depth i think a lot of students they pick a scenario that is like more serious in nature and they think that that alone does the talking and unfortunately not really you can pick some very superficial event some stranger I met on the street, and I can dig a whole story out of that that can say more about me than if I take something very big that happened in my life, but I don't really plug myself into it and, and you know, mine it for meaning, as I kind of see this whole process as being. I'm getting so worked up about this because I, I really think the crux of the issue is that, of course, it's important to pick an event that, that says something about you and is important to you, but it really matters more how you ground your own experiences and reactions than just the event itself. Whenever some, there is some change in your behavior or something, you know, inspires you or something was like a catalyst for a change in who you are, you cannot skip over speaking to how you processed that catalyst. It's not enough to just observe something in the world. And maybe it's like very profound, this thing that you saw, and then suddenly you're like, whoa, realization. Um, you always have to process like what you saw and how it affected you. An example that comes to mind of an essay I read 
um, was this girl who, who talked about um, uh, about how she had a huge fear of the dark growing up because uh, you know people who were close to her someone had been like uh, robbed one time she had a friend who was um, like kidnapped like a lot of really heavy stuff so she had like a really big fear of the dark because that had been like her her experience and she basically told the story of how she adopted a, a pet like this little dog and this dog when it was a puppy was also really afraid of the dark but then over time like she witnessed like how the puppy got braver and overcame that and she talked about how like that inspired her to to like also um, see things differently and like overcome her fears she had this observation of this innocent animal um, experiencing the same things we do, right? I thought that was really wise actually, like to have this little puppy and to have the humility to realize, whoa, like I'm just like this dog basically, <laughs> you know? But I think what was really missing in this essay is what she did basically was um, witness how the dog was getting more brave and then instantly she was like, yeah, I saw this and it inspired me to kind of like be more like that. And it was, it was just not a satisfying way to write the essay because um, uh, it's not enough to just observe something and think that that says something about you. I'm gonna say it again. It's not enough to just observe something and make a, like a deep realization or a deep observation and for that to say something about you. You have to show how this observation, like how this eureka moment, how this random thing in your life that you like noticed, you, you, you have to show how this connects to your web of experiences in your life and how it affected you. You can't just go from having an observation to all of a sudden living a different life because life doesn't work that way and neither can your essay because your essay is about your life. So anytime you, ha you see something, you have to demonstrate and write about how you processed it and how this experience, what you witnessed or what you thought about one day or this realization you had or something that you participated in, whether it was like a boom realization that you started, that, that, that like changed the way you acted or if slowly bit by bit you saw that one aspect and then you started seeing it in other places. Like um, how this event with the puppy, right? how you saw that like innocent cute little animal was actually being braver than you, how you started to look out into the world and notice that people who maybe you thought were, um, I don't know, like smaller than you or, or less strong than you, how actually in some ways they were stronger than you, or how you like met people, uh, you know what I mean, just like this revelation you have cannot be an isolated incident because again, that's not how revelations work. The big thing about a revelation is that it reveals to you how you see other things too. So just focus on that. For the point of your essay, if you really want to say that something affected you, you have to show that it affected you. You can't just have something happen and then you're changed. Don't get caught up in sounding impressive or very formal or even like don't try to be overly dramatic because that's what you think you're supposed to sound like. Because honestly, in any of the essays I've read which kind of sound that way, like they don't sound very genuine, to me, it indicates a lack of confidence, in my opinion. Um, the essays that are written in like a really forthright way and they don't have weird phrasing or like they don't sound phony or anything like that, um, and I can feel like the person really believes what they're writing, I respect that person more. I've never even met them, I don't know who they are, but from what I'm reading, from the story I'm reading, I respect them more because I feel like they're not trying to change themselves and shape their voice or their writing or their story into what they're supposed to do. They're just kind of really saying what they want to say in response to the question. Of course, there is some standard to how these essays have to be, but overall, you do have some space to, to really feel like it's yours. Actually read parts out loud to yourself and ask yourself, would I really 
say that? Do I really mean that? <laughs> Just to check if something sounds good, actually try reading it and you will naturally feel um, if something sounds off. It's not like your friends would give you bad advice, but I mean, are they really in so much of a position to help you? They probably have the same questions you do. So I would just say that it's better to just stay away from people who like are invested in this process because um, you might not get like really the most reliable advice and it just opens the box to them. I mean, this is what I went through. Whenever I would read like someone else's essay and um, it was like completely different from mine, I would like have a moment where I silently panic but looking back on it, it's like, yeah, their paper was completely different from mine because they were complete because they're completely different people from me. So and it took me a long time to realize that and have the confidence to be like, yeah, you know, I recently read a quote that says um, every time I compare myself, I'm destroying myself. And I think this is extremely applicable to this. Um, case of trying to write your essay, right? Because uh, of course yours is going to be different and you don't, when you're not in a solid position with what you're writing or who you even are for that matter, um, it can only re lead to more doubt uh, if you start like interchanging it with other people who are also going through the same thing. It, 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 it won't help you as much as you think it might. You don't want to really be jumping from one story to another to another unless they really, really find a way to connect them somehow. I really just advise people to keep the flow a bit more simple and allow your supporting evidence to maybe be like little details here and there that you bring in to kind of add more depth or, or like evidence or uh, you know, just to, 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 to make those claims stronger basically, like to show um, and not just tell. There should really be like nothing so um, kind of unnecessary uh, in the essay. In unnecessary in the sense that it can distract from your main point. And so these are just some common things that I tended to notice when reading essays. I hope maybe just me kind of riffing <laughs> a bit on <laughs> my pet peeves or, or just like ways to improve can, can help you, can help open some doors when you're writing and, and editing really. This is more of a video for when you've gotten a lot of ideas out and you're trying to come through it. And really bring your essay, this is one more thing I wanna say. When you're, when you're working on this, don't, don't get complacent. There's always ways to, to improve, you know? There's always a way to, to take your essay to like the next level. This is just how writing is. Sometimes you do have to ask other people for um, their, their view, you know, because you might not realize it because you get attached to the way you uh, have written something because, I mean, it's yours after all. It's, it's kind of how your mindset was at the time. But you might not realize until maybe you take a break and look at things from a different angle that you may have included something in there that is just so uh, really not necessary, you know? That, that's just taking up a huge chunk of your 650 words that you could totally do without. And maybe there's another detail in there that's like such a gem that you could like dig and, and, and develop and make it so much stronger. But you would never know that if you write an essay and you're happy with it and you just stop like exploring for ways to make it better. Before I go on and read my own essay, I want to mention that in the past year, I've read a bunch of people's essays that were sent to me. Um, because I think I, I left my email on a response to a comment on my previous video, and I guess a bunch of people saw it because they started emailing me their drafts and asking for advice and stuff like that. And so as much as I could, I would email people like my overall impressions, suggestions for improvement, and I, I would ask people questions to get to know them better just so that my advice could really mean something for them. And I'll continue accepting drafts, I'll have my email in the description this time, but it will be at a fee just because I put in a lot of effort into reading people's essays and really digging for ways to improve and, and like sending really a thoughtful response to you, like substantively, 
So for that reason, plus the fact that I'm a full-time student, um, there will be a fee attached. But if it's something that you might be interested in, please get in contact with me and we can work something out. But without further ado, um, here is my essay that I sent when I was applying to university. So if we haven't talked enough about writing, I actually wrote my essay about writing and this was in response to the prompt which was discuss an accomplishment, event, or realization that sparked a period of personal growth and a new understanding of yourself or others. So here goes. My teachers taught me to read, but my mother taught me to read. She urged me towards volumes of books that connected me to a world outside my own suburban life, one of emotion, intelligence, and drama. A world of ideas that moved me just as they had moved my mother 30 years before. Books never let go of me, threading their way into conversations over the dinner table, in the classroom, with people I had just met. How was it that writers could touch my life and so profoundly years after theirs had ended? More than anything, I desired that power and immortality like theirs. I imagined that writing could be my way to be somebody worth remembering. While participating in writing competitions and reading at my school's poetry club, I began to cater to the expectations of the audience in my head. Fixated on other people's opinions, whether those of my classmates, the jury of a writing contest, or outright strangers, my writing became my outlet to impress, and its sincerity slowly faded. I'm nobody. Who are you? I imagined how Emily Dickinson must have written this, seated alone, writing either to a friend or simply for herself, isolated inside her home in Massachusetts for most of her life. She regularly enclosed poems and letters, but never published during her lifetime. To write for an audience would have been unfathomable. However, when Emily Dickinson, one of America's most prolific poets, claims to be a nobody, it's hardly touching. Of course she's somebody. She's famous. She's celebrated after all. However, I wondered, what if Dickinson's poems had never been published at all? If so, wouldn't this frail woman writing in seclusion, consumed by poetry, forgotten by all but her loved ones, wouldn't she have been the quintessential nobody? Certainly, I wanted to be influential. I wanted a greatness to call my own. But here was my mother who had chosen a different path. Whether I admitted it or not, I doubted whether I would be satisfied if I were her. One day, as we were driving home from the grocery store, seemingly out of the blue, I asked her, Mamo, why did you never become a writer? At my age, she had been a rising star in Bulgaria and was invited to receive national awards for her poetry. Struck with sudden introspection, she raised her eyebrows candidly and reflected for a moment. Eventually, she told me, I don't need anyone to read anything of mine. They only need to meet you. My poetry lives in you. I was suddenly and painfully aware of my own vanity. All those books, but had I learned anything? My mother, who never published, who lived her life for her family at home, for the patients whose lives she has saved in the clinic, urging me to seek beyond myself, inspired so much poetry in me. I thought back to Emily Dickinson, of being nobody, of being somebody. With time, I discovered that the power of the self-proclaimed nobody is the courage to connect with people one-on-one, -on -one 
not to shout into a crowd, wasn't that the reason for my love of books in the first place? Would I still write if I were anonymous? I'd write because my heart swells with the ability to share myself with people. If anything I write or say or do stays with a person and makes them wonder or feel or laugh for a moment, then I am somebody, unconditionally so. Throughout the chapters of my life, no matter what I do, no matter where I go, I will offer the contents of my humanity and that, in its endless expressions, will be my poetry. Thank you.